Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining my session. It's a pleasure to be here at Big Data Toronto to talk about Delta sharing. I'm going to introduce you to the concept with slides and then hop into a demo. Before, before I do that, let me um, introduce myself. So my name is Lee Blackwell, and I'm a solutions architect at Databricks. You can find me all over the interwebs with that handle, uh, Lee to be probably best to find me on LinkedIn, or you could email me directly at uh, lee at databricks.com. Otherwise, I hope to maybe meet you in one of these networking sessions and connect there. Um, I currently reside in San Diego, California. It's a beautiful place if you've never been. And I'm a dog mom, a live music lover, and an adventurer, among other things. So let's get into it. First, let me just introduce Databricks. Um, if you're not working with us yet, we are the data and AI company, and we provide the first concept of this lake house. Um, what is a lake house? Well, in, in a few sentences, it's really just the combination of a data warehouse and a data lake, uh, bringing the power of both together. And so we offer this simple platform that allows you to unify all of your data analytics and AI ML workloads. Um, we work on all of the cloud platforms um, and we're moving to a multi-cloud architecture. We work with customers um, across the globe, 5,000 plus and growing, and I hope one of them will be you. And we are really a culture of innovation and stay dedicated to our open source roots. Um, if you're familiar, Databricks really was founded around Apache Spark as our leaders are the creators of Apache Spark. And as time has gone on, we've created more and more open source tech. And actually what I'm talking to you today um, about is Delta sharing, which is also open source with the Linux foundation. So let's talk about data sharing. You know, it's no secret that in this world, there are like, there are so many producers and consumers of data. And that includes, you know, you and me individually, right? I'm, I'm producing data right now because I'm wearing an Apple watch. Uh, but that also includes enterprises who want to get more from their data assets. And sometimes that means granting permission to that information to external organizations that together then we can generate additional insights and lead to further value. But, you know, in order to actually share, getting out of the nuts and bolts, we find that there's two sort of um, two sort of common methods of doing that. So currently it would be homegrown solutions, think APIs, think SFTP, think ODBC or JDBC open connections, which can of course pose, you know, just scalability issues. Um, they can be complex to manage, just additional overhead in, in general. And on the other side, we have commercial solutions. So these certainly might be a leg up on the homegrown solutions, but they can, they can be expensive. They can lock you in, meaning maybe both the data provider and the data recipient uh, need to be using the exact same tech underneath the hood, and they're going to pay for that. And then they also tend to be inflexible. For example, you might only be able to use SQL to interact with that data. So this just leads to this convoluted you know, mess of different protocols out there. You can see, right, maybe, maybe some sharing is going on with ODBC, some with an API, some with SFTP. And so this just becomes an infrastructure and maintenance mess. So our vision is really to make this a lot more simple and unified to something completely open and language agnostic. So that's really kind of the motivation uh, behind Delta sharing. And then talking about a few of the pillars um, that we have used in, in building out uh, Delta sharing, and as we continue to build out Delta sharing, um, first would be not to lock anyone in, you know, with the support for a wide range of clients by using existing open data for formats, namely, you know, Apache Parquet. And then second would be to make this simple to share existing live data that already exists in your data lake or lake house. So no need to copy it in and out. Third would be just to, you know, this is a big one since security is on everyone's mind, but having strong security, auditing, and governance controls built in. And then not called out here is just the ability to efficiently scale to massive data sets. But that is certainly another pillar of, of Delta sharing. So just, I mean, take a step back and imagine being able to share terabytes of data between organizations efficiently and securely directly into your existing tools and without any help from IT or engineering. You know, that, that historically can take weeks or even months to even set up. Um, but I'm going to show you today how that can take hours. 
And so let's, um, before I kind of show you under the hood what it looks like, I just want to mention um, all the partners that we are going to market with as we as we introduce Delta Sharing. So you see over in the top left, some of the open source clients that you'll be able to directly hook into a Delta Share, um, namely Pandas, Presto, Hive, Apache Spark. Um, in the demo, we'll see how we ingest it with Pandas. And then on the commercial client side, you know, focusing on the BI tools here, Tableau, Power BI, Looker, Click, um, analytics systems, governance partners. And then down at the bottom are all the data providers who are um, partnering with us to set up some of the first data shares as providers. Now, how does it actually work, right? So there are always gonna be two parties involved, the, the recipient over on the right and the provider. Um, and so the provider is gonna start with a table in Delta Lake format. But, you know, but wait, <laughs> what is Delta Lake format if you're not familiar? Um, I have it on my shirt, I have it on the slide. So what it is is an open source storage format based around Apache Parquet that handles all the transaction logging for you in such a way that enables optimal querying, time traveling, and ACID compliance. So in other words, Delta Lake is what allows you to treat your data lake as a data warehouse. And honestly, diving into data lake, Delta Lake could be a whole topic on its own where we would cover the ability to unify streaming and batch processing of unstructured and structured data, you know, among other functionalities. But for the sake of this talk, I just wanted to briefly mention uh, what Delta is. So coming back to the example and how it works, we start with this Delta table, but you know, by the way, in the future, it won't be limited to just tables. It will be more data derivatives, such as uh, models, such as arbitrary files, like images or, uh, PDFs, or think about anything else that you might want to securely share with a partner of yours. And so then the next part of this design is to stand up this Delta sharing server in front of, in front of the tables, which implements the protocol. And so this server's responsibility is to maintain and enforce access permissions to the shared data. So then over on the data recipient side, they can implement any client uh, that implements the Delta sharing protocol. So it could be Apache Spark, Pandas, Tableau, or many others on that growing list of clients that you saw on the previous slide. And you know, the beauty of this is that the provider doesn't need to know or care about what the recipient is using. So how does it really work under the hood? And just to kind of set the stage here, let's set an example, right? So how about the retailer, um, which is the provider over on the left side, uh, sells widgets. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not being very creative here, but the, so this retailer sells some widgets and then our recipient is actually the provider, the maker of said widgets. And for accurate inventory and capacity planning, the supplier will need access to the retailer's sales data. So when this data recipient wants to access that sales table, they'll start by sending this request over to the Delta sharing server. And the next thing that happens is a permissions check on the Delta sharing server. And then an underlying check on the objects or files stored on cloud storage could be, you know, ADLS, S3, GCS. And so Delta sharing actually has the ability to filter files down to a particular subset of data. So for example, our recipient only wants to see the records aligned to one product ID of this entire sales table. Well, using the, the right Delta mechanisms, it will be able to figure out which actual files are needed um, instead of having to grab the entire world of those of the files that back that table. So finally, once access is validated and appropriate files are retrieved, we need to send that data back to the re requesting recipient. And so this is done in an efficient, secure, and cost-effective manner by generating these short-lived URLs using the underlying cloud storage system transfer mechanisms. So you see there on the, on the top where the short-lived URLs are returned to the, to the Delta sharing clients on the recipient side, but then that very bottom line is actually where we're doing the transfer. So since these are just HTTPS URLs, the client can then read directly the subset of files in their tool of choice right from the object store of the provider. So that's it, 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 and if you can look at it this way, you're really only paying the egress cost on the provider side from that from that object store um, under underneath the hood, and you're taking advantage of of the most you know uh, the, the best transfer mechanisms out there using your cloud provider of choice. 
And the, the, another you know, big beauty of this is that you don't need to maintain some beefy server, like an SFTP server, to handle the data transfer between provider and recipient. So, you know, mentioning too, you know, if you are a Databricks customer, you'll get the secure Delta sharing server integrated right into our service. That will give you the ability to create shares, manage recipients, and most importantly, get fine-grained audit logs about who is sharing the data, who is consuming it, and additional metadata about data access. So that can be really useful for, let's say, compliance and billing and chargebacks. And the simple interface we've created for this just uses SQL uh, using these statements you can see here on the left side. Uh, but by the way, there's also a REST API that you could use for more programmatic interaction um, with managing these shares. But let's kind of walk through these statements. Um, putting our data administrator hat on, you'll first create an, a share object. So create, um, create share retail, right? And then next you'll add tables to it using the alter share add table syntax. And if you can imagine, you could also do alter share remove table. And, and you know, it's important to note that it's a one to many relationship. So you create a share and you can add several tables or remove tables from it, maybe in the event that you no longer want to be sharing a table, but you still want your recipient to have access to this overarching share. And then, you know, finally, you would grant access using the, a familiar SQL grant statement. So grant select on share uh, to my supplier. And it's important to note that this is just going to be read-only access as well. So now the recipient can access these tables in any system they want, such as Pandas or Tableau. They don't need to be Databricks customers or users. So let's, uh, let's hop into a demo. But before I do that, a quick pause for you to digest the three different GIFs I've used because I just couldn't choose one. So hopefully I've brought a smile to your face today with those. All right, hopping into a demo. Um, first, we're gonna focus on the data provider side. So you see the red box focusing on that. Um, as I've mentioned, we would first start by doing creating a share. Um, and in this example, we're gonna be sharing a flight data set with our recipient who is a travel agency. Um, so here we go, we would create our share, we would add the table of flights, we then create a recipient, and what happens when you create a recipient is an activation link is then returned back to you. Um, it's up to the data administrator to then get that to the, to the recipient. They could email that, for example, with this activation link. And then now, you've, now the recipient has a credential file. We'll see how that's used on the recipient side. And then of course, I wanna define, you know, what level of access and what share that, that my, my recipient has access to. So that here's your grant statement, grant select on share to my recipient travel agency. Um, step five, and you know, another example, if I just wanna slice the view, I just only wanna give them a subset, um, that's where I would create a view, um, as you can see in this statement, that selects from that overarching table. And then I would alter share and add the view. Another, another you know, step of this is just being able to audit who has access to the share. So you can do a show grant on share. You could also describe the recipient to audit who is actually using your share. Now let's see how I would use that data. So now hopping over to the recipient side of the house, um, I'm simulating this. Let's imagine I'm on a completely different, um, you know, actually coast of the country, for example, maybe even a different country of the, of the world. Um, and I am a recipient who is using Jupiter, uh, Jupiter Hub over on my local machine. First thing I need to do is just pip install the Delta sharing client library. Next thing I import it, I point to that profile file, which includes those credentials that I previously mentioned. And then I would instantiate my Delta sharing client using that profile file. And then for example, I can list all my tables. Next, I could, you know, just to, just to reiterate that these tables are also just gonna be objects. Here's where I would iterate through each share, each schema and each table and print out um, the actual object to use. And then lastly, let's actually work with the data. Um, all I need to do to pass in the specific table URL for that flight table I want to read is a syntax using profile file and then hashtag and then my entire um, catalog share and table name, excuse me, catalog database and table name. And then I would say delta sharing dot load as pandas, 
my table URL and there I've got a data frame to work with. For example, I'm just doing a head on that. So that wraps it up. I hope it was um, informative and please feel free to ask me any questions you have. And I look forward to connecting and helping you um, understand Delta sharing and hopefully adopt it into your organization. Have a great one.